As my full-time job requires me to be in front of a computer screen all day, I find that having the proper workspace and tools really helps to get work done. Since my hobbies at home also often requires me to be sitting at my desk, I've managed to build over the years what I think is the perfect desk setup. It's been over a year since I've made a desk setup tour video and things have changed quite a bit since then. One thing is, I moved to a new place, but most of the core pieces that make this setup have also changed, so I thought it'd be worth taking a look at what it's like nowadays. So without waiting any further, let's check it out. First, let's talk about the main piece of this desk setup, the desk. This one was provided by Ergon Office, a local sit-stand desk company that produces high-quality desks. One thing you might notice is that it's fairly small and that's because I went with the smallest surface that they have, which is the 24 by 48 inch format. It's fairly small but that's really what I wanted. I used to have a 30 by 60 inch desk and given how small my PC is and how I only use a single monitor, I felt like I didn't need such a big desk to begin with. I've been trying out this one for the last months and it's really great. Switching between height presets is super easy, the motors are quiet, but fast at the same time, and whenever my back feels stuck, I get out of my chair and stand up for a bit. What I like the most though is how stable it is even at high settings. I've tried my fair share of standing desks over the years, and this one is definitely the most solid one I've come across. It's literally built like a tank. Finally, the surface is simply put, amazing. It's scratch resistant, heat resistant, antimicrobial, and anti-fingerprint. And the best thing is that it's actually manufactured here in Canada. It's soft to the touch and seems like it's going to last for a long time. Overall, I'm really pleased with it, but for more information, I invite you to check out my full review on this exact desk. On the wall behind my desk, I recently installed some acoustic panels. These were kindly provided by AeroZoom, a company that specializes in acoustic treatment products. I decided to go with polyester fiber panels, as I thought they looked better than regular foam panels, and I liked the color selection they had. So I got 16 panels in grey, 8 in blue, and 8 in white. I actually took the time to come up with a design I liked with Photoshop, mapping my office's wall with the panels. The panels come in sealed packaging, and overall the experience was great. If I had one thing to criticize though, it would be that some panels had stains, but fortunately there was always at least one clean side. And then I installed all panels to the wall. It took a few hours, but it was pretty straightforward. I didn't want a permanent installation, so I used double-sided tape, only to know that the panels will all fall down in the next days. I had to reapply double-sided tape again, but this time I used larger pieces, and I added Gorilla Glue to the foam side to make sure it grips properly. And then, no panel fell again. Here's a little sound comparison between before and after. So this is a little sound test without any acoustic treatment in my room. So there's probably a lot of echo. Uh, hopefully these acoustic panels will help a bit with that. So now I'm using a shotgun microphone, still in the room without any acoustic treatment. It's probably a bit better because uh, it picks up right in front of it instead of a stereo pattern. So now I am using the stereo microphone, so it should pick up more of the room's echo. Um, hopefully these panels help a bit, but I'll see when I actually take a look at the footage. Now that I've used the room for a bit, it definitely helps with my vocal recordings. I notice the difference right away when editing my headshots with these panels. For a proper studio sound, I would need to invest more and potentially add bass traps in the corners too, but I want this room to still look like an office, so I think this is a good compromise for now. Overall, I'm satisfied with this product and would recommend these AeroZoom polyester fiber panels for light acoustic treatment. For some proper echo dampening, I would go with thicker foam panels though. A good desk wouldn't be complete without a proper chair, and I decided to go with a used Herman Miller Seru chair. I think this model looks really good. Super minimal, no fuss, it's super compact and has a modern touch. I'm happy that it came with a neutral theme. The dark grey fabric looks nice, although if I were to pick, I'd probably go with a black or white base instead of this chrome finish. This model has been discontinued, but it was replaced by the Cosm line, and keep in mind these are super expensive chairs, so if you can get your hands on a refurbished or used model in good condition, you can often save quite a bit. 
The Seru is a bit of a compromise considering my usage. It's more of a task chair than an ergonomic model. In fact, it only has a height adjustment, the rest of the chair automatically adjusts depending on your weight, and the tilt mechanism works with the plastic frame at the back. It's quite impressive how comfortable it is considering how average it looks. Again, I wouldn't pay retail for this model, but I'm really satisfied given its used price tag. To add a bit of color to the setup, I have a few RGB lights here and there. In total, there are two LifeX strips, one at the back of my monitor, and the other being under the desk. And I have two LifeX mini bulbs, each in a desk lamp. These lamps are from Thomas and are often featured in desk setups. They're not too pricey and the quality is great with real wooden parts, so overall, great looking lamps. So with a total of 4 lights, where the strips can emit multiple colors at once, I can set a nice mood in the office, and it's bright enough that I don't need other light sources in the evening. These LifeX lights are super vibrant and easy to control with the app. I used to have reliability issues with them, but since I upgraded my Wi-Fi router, I no longer face these issues. Cable management is pretty straightforward with this setup. I use the metal frame and velcro ties to keep cables as close as possible to the underside of the desk. I also have a long power strip under there, so I can have a single power cable going to the floor, and even there I manage to have it not touching the ground by tying it to the legs. It doesn't look perfect from underneath, but from above it's close to perfection to me, and that's good enough. Having desk grommets also helps with the cables that have to go on the desk. Now, taking a look at my monitor, this is a really new addition to my setup. In fact, I'll have an in-depth review in the coming months, but up until now, I love it so much. That's the PD3220U by BenQ, a high-end 32-inch 4K IPS monitor. This model offers amazing color accuracy paired with 10-bit colors, but the thing I love the most is that it has a built-in KVM switch and supports Thunderbolt 3. That means that I can plug both my mouse and keyboard in the monitor, and when I switch between my desktop PC and MacBook, not only does the monitor switches the video inputs, but it also reconnects my peripherals to the computer currently in use. All of that with a single Thunderbolt 3 cable to my MacBook, that can also deliver the full 87 watt of power it needs to charge its battery. That is quite amazing. The monitor also has a great build quality, the stand is mostly metal, and I like the fact that bezels are all even and have no branding at the front. That metal stand can raise quite high as well, at a point where I have not yet considered adding a monitor arm to my setup, although that might be a great thing to investigate in the future for an even cleaner look. This monitor is packed with features, the image quality is simply perfect, and the built-in KVM makes it a perfect monitor for my usage. Like I said, stay tuned for my full-on review, but as of now, that's a winner for me. Now to the computer that I use the most with this setup, it's built in the Dancase A4 V2. While newer form factor cases have hit the market since I bought this case two years ago, I still like its overall design. It's clean and simple and can accommodate a full-size GPU, which is always nice to not run into thermal issues. I had to replace the RAM recently as it was defective and led to a bunch of issues, especially in-game. I also upgraded to an EVGA RTX 2070 Super from my previous EVGA GTX 1070 for the win. It's a pretty big bump in performance and I mostly bought the card as I wanted to try the latest Call of Duty and I'm quite satisfied with the overall experience. Then it rocks an i5-8600, 16GB of RAM and two 256GB M.2 SSDs in RAID 0. These are the 960 EVOs from Samsung. All these parts are powered by a 600 watt SFX power supply by Corsair. Overall, the temperatures are great. Running benchmarks on the CPU and GPU yields max temperatures in the 75 degrees Celsius range, which isn't too bad considering this build is completely passively cooled, with no extra fans other than the ones on the GPU and CPU. To edit my videos and to actually do my full-time job, I use a MacBook Pro. That's a 2018 model with the base 6-core CPU and it has the lower-end GPU as well. Overall, it's a great laptop and performs really well with 4K footage on Final Cut. Like I said before, pairing it with this BenQ monitor is a breeze. I love that with a single cable, I have access to my peripherals, it feeds a full 4K video signal and charges the laptop at the same time. Now to my peripherals. I use the Ant Pro 2 as my daily driver. This one came in white with Kalebox whites, so these are clicky switches, although the click is very light. I swapped the default keycaps for an ABS kit from Max Keys. 
These look so good. They're double shot and super durable. The legends look super great and they don't have slits in close shape characters, so it's super clean. I got these a few months ago for a review and while they're a bit too expensive for my budget, I think they do look really nice and they feel great too, given their SA profile. Overall, a really nice set and I like that it matches my blue and grey theme. Now, for my mouse of choice, I use a good old Logitech G900 for anything gaming. The latency is unperceivable and I like the overall design of the mouse. However, for my Mac, I prefer using the Magic Trackpad as the G900 is not super well supported on Mac. It's great for productivity and to scroll horizontally on video timelines. Finally, I don't have any speakers as I tend to use my Sony 1000XM2 for pretty much anything. You do get a bit of latency sometimes, but not having a wire is such a great advantage and I wouldn't want to live without it anymore. So that wraps it up for my 2019 desk setup tour. Have any recommendation for me? Drop them down below. As always, I'll have affiliate links down below to everything I showed in today's video, so found anything interesting, feel free to take a look and you'll probably find what you're looking for. So thank you for watching, make sure you leave a like if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know why down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.